SpaceX is creating a monster. Why? Because this beast is breaking the rocket scale. Today, I'll show you why. What about it? Go for launch. Or go for launch. Let's light this candle. Ignition sequence start. My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It? And today we'll dive into the belly of the beast that is SpaceX's Super Heavy Booster 7. Chief produced some incredible and so far unseen footage we'll dissect together. After that, let's look at the Axiom 1 launch and docking in detail and what it means for the spaceflight industry. So let's dive right in. Starship Updates SpaceX is working 24 hours a day at Starbase right now. Booster 7 at the launch site and Booster 8 and Ship 24 at the production site. That's the main focus. At least of what we can see through YCAM Operator Chief's point of view. And these are the pictures I wake up to every day right now. Stunning footage of a new kind of rocket booster supposed to send us to Moon and Mars in the near future. SpaceX is super heavy. The name fits, 9 meter diameter, 69 meters tall, 33 Raptor engines blasting out 3,400 tons of fuel in under 3 minutes. In comparison, a Falcon 9 booster has roughly 400 tons of fuel. So one single super heavy booster has around 8.5 times the propellant on board compared to a Falcon 9 booster. But only a little under 4 times the number of engines. Everything is bigger on Starship. Now you might ask what all the spaghetti under that booster is supposed to do. That's new, we didn't get these kinds of views yet. That's because there hasn't been a booster yet that was brought to the launch site without the engine covers. This is a super heavy booster without the skirt and it's not even blushing. We can basically look straight at its private parts, the engine connectors and gimbal setup. Taking a closer look reveals the whole engine setup. An outer ring of 20 engines, fixed in place and without a gimbal system. Those are the boost engines. They are solely for the needed push to orbit. Static unable to steer and just blasting for around 3 minutes. They do not need flexible connections as they don't move, so it's static pipes with just a very small flexible end. Then come the inner engines and it gets much messier. 13 engines and likely more than 50 connectors, methane and oxygen inlet, spin-up inlet, hot gas inlet, autogenous pressurization and backflow, electrical connections, sensors and telemetry. At first it does look like a mess, but everything here makes sense and has a purpose. And actually this is a rather clean setup for a rocket. It's just that there are so many SpaceX Raptor 2 engines that need to be fed and controlled by the avionics. Mid last year Elon Musk tweeted a picture of a super heavy thrust dome from the inside. So this is what's sitting on the inside of Booster 7. Well actually it's even messier, as this still is a 29 engine setup and Booster 7 already has the new 33 engine setup. So add another 4 engine mounts with all the needed connections to this engineering masterpiece and you have Booster 7. Haha, <laughs> that thing is crazy. As a fun fact, you might not have noticed that there were 19 SpaceX workers inside this single engine section at the moment the picture was taken. 19, and you don't even notice it much. Imagine there would be 19 people in the room you're sitting in right now while watching this. Crowded, right? That's how big this thing is. It just doesn't come across very well on your screen and in these pictures. I've been to Starbase twice now and of course I had this insane wow effect the first time I saw a starship and a booster. The second time though the feeling was exactly the same. It didn't fade away. In reality these prototypes are so much bigger than you seem to think when looking at this footage. They are true monster rockets. I'll be at Starbase again shortly after our move to Florida, first week of May, if you want to come down and chat with me and Chief. It'll be my third visit. It's a bit like a drug. Once you've been there, you just can't wait for your next hit of SpaceX Starship glory. It's a unique project and it gets even more unique with every day that passes at Starbase. Let them know in the comments. I've heard from quite a few of the SpaceX Starbase workers that they watch my episodes regularly. 
show them some love, they'll read it. I think I can speak for many here. If there are any of the SpaceX workers watching this right now, look into the comment section. You have all our gratitude for working your butts off at Starbase every day. The reason for us getting this extraordinary view of Super Heavy Booster 7's engine connections is simple. SpaceX is rushing this latest booster prototype through a rigorous test parkour. From the first ever full cryo test on a Super Heavy booster in the entire history of the Starship program directly to the next test. As talked about on the last episode, this 33 hydraulic ram beast's sole purpose is to test if the structural integrity of the booster's hull can keep up with the simulated thrust of 33 Raptor engines at full throttle. They basically test the forces inflicted on the hull as if it was in full flight, going upwards and pushing a fully fueled 1400 ton starship to the velocity it would need to reach orbit. Not an easy task at all. Starships and their boosters are made from 3.97 mm thick 304X stainless steel. So almost half a centimeter. That might sound sturdy, but over the full length of 69 meters of a booster hull, it actually isn't much at all. If you'd want to build it at scale of 1 to 72, so with a height of 95 centimeters or roughly 37 inches, the hull would only be 0.05 millimeters thick, so thinner than a human hair. Keep that in mind when looking at 3D printed Starships. And yes, that was Starship steel in the picture I took for you. The production site right now is at least equally as interesting as the launch site. That's all it is about right now. Ship 24, the one to be pushed up to orbit by Booster 7, hopefully in May or June this year. I know there have been lots of delays with the orbital launch, but it does look very promising right now. Even if it ends up to be July, it would only be another 13 weeks now. This is Ship 24's nose cone. Besides just a few missing heat tiles, it's by far the best heat shield we've ever laid eyes on. The star bricks are placed even and smooth. The special tiles that are not hex shaped have been ironed out by now. All in all, this looks like a heat shield that could actually survive re-entry. The same goes for the tank and engine section of Ship 24. Sitting in the high bay right now, the central downcomer responsible for the connection between the upper methane tank and the engine section has recently been installed. After that, the engine section was mated to the tank section. This picture shows the new cold gas thrusters and the new quick disconnect plate. The thrusters will utilize ullage gas from the tanks for course corrections, which is a really smart move as it doesn't need extra fuel. It just takes some fumes from the tanks for reaction control thrust. The new quick disconnect plate is the reason for SpaceX recently unmounting the QD plate and connected fuel lines from the Mechazilla quick disconnect arm. It is redesigned and it sits higher on the Starship hull. So a new quick disconnect adapter is needed on the Mechazilla QD arm. Overall, Ship 24 and Booster 7 are sprinkled with updated hardware all over the construction compared to Ship 20 and Booster 4. Likely much more capable and so we're in for a treat once they finally launch. Now before we head over to the next topic, remember to like, subscribe and maybe even become a channel member or supporter or to buy yourself a Ywear shirt. After all, it helps us to give you even better updates. Thank you so much. Axiom 1 launch and docking report. So it happened. Axiom 1 lifted off towards the International Space Station and it was quite the show. As usual with SpaceX crew launches, the presentation was incredible. Missed the launch? No problem. Let's do a rundown of the first all-commercial crew launch towards the ISS. Yes! And here we go. From left to right, we have Mark Pathy from Canada, Larry O'Connor from the US, Michael Lopez Alegria, a former NASA astronaut from the US, now working for Axiom Space and commander of the mission, and Aiton Stibbe from Israel as they exit the suit up room. Roughly three hours until they had the ride of their lives on board SpaceX's Crew Dragon Endeavor. As it's traditional on a SpaceX crew launch, they got a ride in Tesla Model X's towards the pad. After all, Elon Musk's companies don't just cover fancy rides in space. Arriving at the pad with visible excitement is part of any crewed spaceflight. In SpaceX's flight suits, it just looks that little bit cooler. Even the walk through the crew access arm looks like it's straight out of a sci-fi movie. 
A quick signature on the wall and off we go into the most advanced crew vehicle on the planet. Still almost three hours to go. The excitement must be incredibly high at this point. Sitting inside the capsule with three hours to go waiting for engine ignition. I wish I could do that. Hatch closed at T minus two hours. And opened again because there was a foreign object inside the seal. There are sensors responsible for leak checks. Very useful system. Access arm retract at T minus 44 minutes. Launch escape system armed. That's it. They are on their own now. Fueling in progress. Falcon 9 is coming alive and getting ready for the launch. SpaceX provided a nice live view from their latest and most advanced drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas, which of course was already in position downrange for the booster landing. For perspective, they may look small on the screen, but they are actually about the size of a football field. Less than 10 minutes to go, the excitement inside the capsule is at peak performance. And one minute to launch. FTS armed, tanks topped off, Falcon 9 is in startup and now in control. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. And liftoff of Falcon 9, Axiom 1 and Crew Dragon Endeavor on their mission towards the International Space Station. Stunning pictures from the pad and nominal propulsion on stage 1. 50 seconds into flight, stage 1 throttling down in preparation for Max-Q. Everything nominal. Max-Q and supersonic. Falcon 9 booster B1062.5 performed flawlessly. Again, the number after the point is the number of flights. So this booster has done 4 flights prior to Axiom 1. Still absolutely unique in the spaceflight industry. Phenomenal pictures from the tracking camera, you can see the rocket exhaust expand as the ambient pressure falls, giving less and less resistance to the exhaust gases. And Miko, main engine cutoff, stage separation and MVAC ignition of the second stage. Falcon 9 is not only the most advanced rocket in the world, it also performs like a clockwork, over and over again. Shortly after, we can see a very clear view of the grid fin deployment in preparation for booster re-entry. You can still see the coast of Florida roughly 120 kilometers below. And you can see the booster slowly aiming towards the landing spot as it needs to re-enter engines first. Entry burn to slow the booster down at T plus 7 minutes and 30 seconds. Stage 2 with Crew Dragon Endeavor still accelerating towards its orbit. And just as the booster goes transonic, the second stage cuts off the single vacuum Merlin engine. Nominal orbit insertion. And shortly after that, the booster safely lands on the drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean. For SpaceX, the age of reusable rockets is already in full swing. Flight number 5 done for B-1062. It feels so normal, but it's still only SpaceX doing this. And that's it, Crew Dragon separation. Looks like child's play when SpaceX does this and they even have time to provide us with the best rocket launch broadcasts in the entire industry. Well done SpaceX. 21 hours fast forward and Axiom 1 docked with the International Space Station without any issue. While docking was happening, SpaceX provided us with some detailed views of what was happening inside the capsule. It's an open book to everyone. SpaceX shows everything. Why? Maybe just because it's really hard to copy this stuff. And hatch open. The crew will now stay in space for 8 days before heading back down, performing all sorts of science experiments and enjoying the most incredible view of Earth you can get. Axiom 1 marks the beginning of a new age. Commercial spaceflight is expanding and in the coming decades this will become more and more normal and with SpaceX's Starship it might even become affordable for everyday people like you and me. Well done SpaceX, well done Axiom Space. It's sponsor time and this month we're talking about a very important topic that's not talked about enough. Did you know one man every hour every day is diagnosed with testicular cancer? Now don't laugh, it's a pretty serious thing. It's the most common form of cancer amongst men ages 15 to 35. Since April is National Testicular Cancer Awareness Month, my sponsor Manscaped has partnered with the Testicular Cancer Society. It makes sense. Manscaped and the Testicular Cancer Society both concentrate on the same thing. 
they save balls, get it? One of my favorite products in their collection is the Lawn Mower 4.0 trimmer. Cordless, waterproof body and ready to help you get some hygiene going down there. Manscaped takes saving and shaving very seriously. This year Manscaped will be donating $50,000 to their long-term partner, the Testicular Cancer Society, to help those impacted by testicular cancer. Want to help and be aware? Get yourself a lawnmower 4.0 by Manscaped and check out manscaped.com slash TSC to learn more about how you can detect testicular cancer yourself and early. You can also make a donation at testiculacancersociety.org if you want to help more. As always, you can use my promo code ABOUTIT to get 20% off plus free international shipping at manscaped.com. Join the Manscaped movement and don't forget to take care of your pair. Today's supporter shoutout goes to Bob Brink, Donald F. Saunders Jr., Rocket Prophet, even twice on YouTube and Patreon, John Pleen, John Phillips, Nicholas Morales, Morgus Le Magnificent, Chris Jensen and many others. Thank you all so much for making our dreams come true, for helping us so much and for being there as friends and advisors alike. Without you, there would simply be no why. Enjoy this ad-free and early release. Come join us on our supporter-exclusive Discord server and chat with the team and me. You're most welcome and we all thank you from the bottom of our hearts. You rock. I love you very much. Yes! And then came the explosion. <laughs> I can count. I'll try again. That is wrong. Not an easy task at all. And my voice is going away. <laughs> What? The thrusters, the thrusters, thrust, 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 thrust,